Welcome citizen. This is the official state coverage of the proceedings here at the Kerbal Space Center, in honor of Leader Day. It is truly a good day to live here in the Kerbal's Democratic Republic of North and Plateau. I am Valentina Kerman and my co-host, Dunamit Kerman. That's right Val. Today marks the anniversary of the arrival to this plane of existence our dear leader Twit Jung Yi. Twit Jung Yi, of course, came from his seat among the gods to lead us to greatness over 5,000 years ago. We have many festivities planned for today, including a rare public appearance by the great Kerbal himself. All that and more later here on Platform TV, but first a word from the Warfront. Hey guys, and welcome back to this special Leader Day edition of Kerbal Collaborative Warfare, the Kerbal series where five YouTubers have teamed up and split up the bases of Earth Kerbin side so they can have war with the weapons and armament in the BD Armory mod. I hope everybody's doing alright out there as we launch our newest vehicle. This is the Birch Swan. Uh, it is a combined bomber missile launch platform. There's a small gun on the front as well. Uh, we have Tamti in control of here, the celebrated war hero of Edis side. And today we are on a mission of liberation, freedom, and the way to impose the leader's will on the world around us. In Tape Gaming's last episode, he came across Into My Lands and decided that he had to take over Woollypool just because someone else had blown up his stuff. I mean, ah, oh, it's totally unfair if you ask me. But at the end of that particular episode, intentionally or not, he laid down a challenge to me. He turned around and said that he did not believe I had any vehicles capable of such long-range flight as to go to Woollypool and then make my way to Edith's side and take back that base. Now, as it happens, my plan is not to go and take over Edith's side, but I did want to show that this vehicle is more than capable of any long-range attack patterns. And I believe the mission I have got planned out today more than demonstrates that capability. So, I think what we're going to do now is a little bit of an homage a la Penguin and play some music whilst I get close enough to actually be able to come and do some damage somewhere. So we're closing in on Woolly Pool and bombs away. We are definitely well within sight of being able to like drop down a cluster bomb here. As you can see from the underside, I did actually drop it. Though for some reason, whenever I drop a bomb from this sort of top-down view, I never actually get to see it travel away. It just kind of disappears from my screen before I know what's going on. Alright, so we've got Tamti and Largi here trying to decide which way they're going to approach this. The thing we're going to do is try and nosedive down as quick as possible so we can avoid any missiles without actually having to fire too many countermeasures because, well, I, whilst I have uh, 120 odd countermeasures on here, I thought that maybe I could do this like this. Now, my attack pattern is to fire two separate groups of missiles and you can see I just missed one that was coming for me there. This is because whilst the gun turret can concentrate on one set of missiles it most definitely cannot concentrate on two at once and with that boom 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 that's our big, big attack gone down. That was all the defense bases taken care of, everything taken care of so what we're going to do is turn around and watch this cluster bomb drop down now. Uh, it's just a little bit of extra niceness there. You can see it is now split apart and we're just waiting for it to hit the floor and do some damage. The one thing that I have noticed in almost all of my bombing runs is that I overshoot by quite a bit. And I'm not sure how to go about correcting that, but you know, at some point I'm going to have to learn how to do so. You would have thought just firing when my green bit is a little further in front of the base would have been the way to do that, but I have done that. Lots and lots and lots. Okay, so what we're doing here is just having a, sli uh, a quiet flyover just to see if anything is still alive that can actually attack me. I can see that there is a pink marker down there and that worries me. But coming in this slow, this low, 
it's not done anything to attack me. So I'm feeling fairly good. Uh, we're going to buzz past, maybe fire off a few shots, see if that, like, kickstarts any AI into, into doing stuff, but it doesn't. So we're going to come down for a nice gentle landing here and see what all the fuss is about. Unfortunately for the prospects of this vessel, uh, Tamti is not well known for her landings and Largi is fresh out of flight school, but we do manage to put down safely, which to me is a little bit of a miracle going on there. But what we're going to do now is turn around, use our engines to push up a little way and go see what this vehicle is all about here. An enemy vessel abandoned at my place with a soldier inside. So we're going to send in Tamti as the most diplomatic and well-known of our Kerbals on site. And she's all like, hey, Bob, you remember me? We met in flight school. And he's like, yeah, I remember you, but you're going to have to go away. You're my enemy. Ah, oh, Bob, don't be like that. You know we can work it out. Plus, we have quite a big gun pointed at your ship there. Yes, I can see that gun pointed there, but what do you want from me? Well, it's quite simple. You're going to get out and get into the plane with me, and then Largi's going to take your plane away. Ha, <laughs> ha, whatever you say, toots. But of course, destroying all the defences is only half the mission. The next thing we have to do is go out and take down this flag. Uh, it turns out Agonarch had taken over this base, not Tape. Obviously, just a, a flag error. I mean, I, I know Tape is having troubles with the flags, but, you know, should be able to not make it look like Agonarch had taken it. But anyway, yes. And here is Tamti overtaking this base uh, for the glories of Leader Day. And with that, we are going to go back to the Leader Day procession, and I will see you after these words. Welcome back to Space Square and the Leader Day festivities. Woo-hoo-hoo. There is a murmur coming from the assembled masses, I believe. Yes. He's here. Dear Leader. Leader has chosen to arrive in his veto craft today, which he has been piloting since the age of six. Leader is waving to the crowd. Such benevolence, such wonder. Dear Leader is of course the undisputed Red Bull Ares world champion. They no longer run the event as Dear Leader wins every time. Truly we are blessed to be living in such times as these, and in a country as prosperous as ours. Glorious leader showing of his skills there, performing his signature reverse slam positioning the hatch for ease of exit. Stepping out of the veto first, is the leader's trusted bodyguard Hanzo, an ancient man descended from the stone giants of old. It was only two years ago that Hanzo stopped a small army from trying to kill Twit Jong Yi, on leader's day. Leader was of course unconcerned, as even a thousand Kerbals could not kill him. That's right Val. When the 100 men burst into Leader's room, he just sat there and stilled them with a look, while Hanzo killed them all. Glories. 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 We will of course be returning to Space Square at some point to call back in with the parade. But now for the second part of the Birch Swans mission. National pride is at stake, a challenge was laid down, an assumption of my inability to deal with a particular situation was brought up. And so I had to answer that call with this vehicle. Now, I'm actually going up towards Cola Crater and I will explain why later on. Um, but I'm flying a little bit blind at this point, so I don't know if you guys have been watching our saga of trying to figure out how this base boss works. Well, still I have not managed to figure it out, or I do later on in this episode, but at this point I had not managed to figure out how to like select a base and get it to point me in the right direction. So I'm just kind of flying northwards here. This is more of a, a tour along the, the coast of my own lands than to uh, go anywhere else. Now, if I was going to Edis side, I would literally be taking a sharp left now and landing just yonder. It is literally spitting distance from this height. So I feel that that answers the claim of whether I could get up and do all those. But let's talk diplomacy, shall we? And in fact, tape. I'm talking to you in, sp in particular here. Now, I feel we're at a little bit of a stalemate, like, you could take my bases, I could then, with the power of, like, the taking your own base back, go and be able to take an another one of your bases, and we could trade back and forth, like, these two bases quite a lot, 
But I'm not sure if you've been watching around, but there are two other empires out there that are growing rapidly, taking advantage of a certain situation that we have on the planet, and that is going to leave you and me behind. I find you a worthy opponent, and I presume that you're finding me an overwhelming opponent. So I think we can safely say that we're okay for now if we turn our attentions elsewhere. Now what I'm proposing here is not just a, a straight up ceasing of hostilities. As you may see on my screen right here, I have a prisoner of yours. And in my glorious leader's unceasing benevolence, he has decided to offer you a deal based on this particular prisoner here. He is offering you a four turn non-aggression pact and the return of your prisoner if we just turn our separate ways for these next four turns. That, that is all that is required of you. Uh, in four turns time we can have back at each other as I know we both want to but the political system on the world at the moment is by far dictating that we turn our attention elsewhere. I need to break from the diplomacy talk for just a moment to point out that I have managed to get the base boss thing working in this flight. You can see up the top there that I now have the left and right arrow. Uh, those observant of you will notice how I did this. This was in the map view. You have to double click on Kerbin so that it is the focus and then that shows you all the bases on the, on the planet. You can then double click the base you're after and that then puts it into that view up there uh, into the little guidance system. Now. I did actually overshoot a little bit, which to me just speaks further to the long range capabilities of this vessel. We have overflown by a good couple of hundred kilometers and still we are able to turn around and engage with such precision that I cannot even speak of it. So diplomats of the Territorial Arctic Protection Entente, you have heard my proposal. Uh, we can discuss afterwards exactly how the prisoner return will happen and stuff like that. but. The initiative is quite obviously yours. Yours is the next next round to go. I have reset us back to the position where we were before our little skirmish started out on the border. So if you just turn your attention elsewhere, I will deliver Bob to one of your bases at the beginning of my next turn. Uh, right, so we're coming in nice and hot now. I'm trying to line up the bomb sites. And we're coming in fine. Okay, so what we need to do here is just try and release it nice and early this time somewhere about here that 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 should hopefully do it right and then we're going to do the standard dive in there upside down so we can get a nice nose dive on the go and try just try to get off two sets of missiles now i i know that he's got this uh the, the rover that is really hard to destroy so it could be a little bit awkward but if we can just take out the gun off the top of it that's all we want to do it is that goalkeeper that i'm really worried about always the goalkeeper that I'm worried about. Everything looks alright. If we can just keep this in view. Oh, oh, oh. One of them exploded, but one of them hit. Whether that was good enough, I don't know. We'll have to go and find out. Um, I don't know. Yeah, let's fly over. Uh, so, oh, 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 oh. Is that mine? Is that his? No, no, it's flying away. Oh, that was my, my cluster bomb. Is it, see how early I did it and how far away it is? That, that's just absolutely rubbish. Okay, so if we come in for a nice quiet landing, in fact, no, let's let's do a fly round, see if it's going to shoot at me. No, even if I shoot at it, it's not going to shoot back. I, I think we're safe here. I think we can actually take this as taken. But why is this flag like eight kilometers out? That's, um, I don't know. This game's been acting weird since we put so many different things on the map at once. It's all just a bit bit crazy okay so i need to come and pull myself around for a landing here it should be nice and simple though uh, indeed it was quite a simple landing so i went for a flight over the top of that uh, a little bit later on and found out that it was actually sunk below the floor um in fact when i when i actually swapped to look at it it was rising out from the ocean pretty quickly and destroyed itself on the surface of the planet which you know it's all right that, that suits my purpose as well it means that all i had to do really was just get out and and put down a flag so that's all good i was just about to uh roll forwards and have a look at the debris that was left after these missiles struck home but i am approaching down the runway at quite a timid state uh, I, as I said, I know that this was made out of one of those indestructible rover bodies, so I'm expecting things still to be attached to it, or maybe things that will just, like, still have a go at me. Maybe a missile will go flying off. And I was having a little bit of trouble with my aiming here, um, but, you know, it all good. 
everything is in pieces. So, yay, base is mine. I did do a flag placing ceremony just off the side of the runway, but now that I've come to edit it all together, it, it, I don't have the footage anywhere. So you'll just have to take my word that Tam T got out and raised a flag to the honour of the glorious leader. Happy Leader's Day. I am giddy with excitement. The parade has entered Space Square. That's right, Val. Up front we have the Elite Platypus Squad, carrying grub class missiles into the square. The next aircraft, the Winged Mongoose, was the first of our warcraft to take an enemy's base. That's right, Val. Tamji, the legendary war hero, was responsible for that. Indeed, do mummy. Then comes the latest incarnation of leader's inventiveness, a birch swan. Word reaches me from our news partners that this vessel has just this day been involved in the liberation of Wally Piole. Glories. But what is this unit at the end? Do mummy, I am not familiar. It's the Centurion, Val, our newest defense drone, deployed to the active front to help keep us safe. How wonderful to be so looked after. Glorious leader. Happy leader day. So there's a few parts of my turn that I'm not uh, that I haven't performed yet and one of them is of course putting out the ground unit at Woolly Pool. Uh, if Tape rejects my offer this is going to be the thing protecting this place because I think he could take this base as the, the one he lost type rule which I, I, I will be able to deal with if that is the situation that, that turns on but taking what I've learned from the turtle uh, I have built the Centurion. It's not quite as uh, heavily armoured as the as the turtle was, but that's because I don't think I actually need it. What I do have on here is those four chain guns on top to try and like multi-intercept missiles. I'm not sure if that's a thing or not. The other thing I was going to deal with at this point was uh, Tape's Raptor, but I want to stop right here and take you to elsewhere. So this next bit goes back in time just a little bit to when I actually first captured this raptor off of Bob. I was like, I know what we can do here. Tamkti can definitely get some footage of like her flying away from Bob and looking all like super proud as she takes the, the, the stuff off the enemy like that's come and killed her comrades at this place or something like that. The only thing was that I'd forgotten that this was the vehicle that lost its tailplane. Uh, so... First off, I was having terrible trouble with controlling a VTOL anyway. This is the first time flying a vehicle like this. I was like, uh, well, that was obviously just a practice go right. So we'll, we'll, we'll try this again after a quick, quick load. But I then actually left it there, carried on with the storyline, uh, and then came back here with Largy, where I was like, okay, we'll try this again. Um, obviously, I'm going to give myself another go to see if I can actually fly. And everything kind of starts off all right. Uh, I, I have troubles with the action groups, but that's just like a new vehicle, right? We, we, we just need to do things like that. And then, I don't know if you guys saw that, but I started drifting ever so slightly off of center. I even started trying to use my wing as an upright thing to try and try and give myself some stability, but yeah, this, this just wasn't going to work at all. And for some reason, I forgot to press the eject button, which would, was super sad, right? So now we're back into what I'm classifying as the real-time turn, uh, where we're going to try and fly this like a VTOL. My idea here is to try and get it to the mountains behind the Kerbal Space Center, because that would be great. But unfortunately, it just pitches forward. So it's time to eject, bust out my parachute, and go, all right, well, that's it. I, three goes at trying to fly this thing. Obviously, it's not mine for the taking. Well done, tape. You beat me on that one. Now Largy's going to run around inside Woolly Pool and explore to her heart's content. And I am going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, guys. I will see you next time where, well, what we're going to do pretty much is fully dependent on how Tape takes his next turn. I am in particular looking forward to uh, expanding out and trying other people's skills. Like, I know Tape is a worthy adversary and, and someone that we could quite easily exchange war with in a fun and equal manner. But I'd like to go see what everyone else is about as well. Anyway, I will see you then when we're going to do that. Bye!